Initially, we came up with the idea for the program uh, and passed the legislation creating it. I uh, then went to the local communities and said, okay, here's this new program. Uh, it requires a lot of work on your part. Uh, it requires really that there be a substantial local commitment uh, that is demonstrated uh, through the development of a very specific plan uh, for the heritage area. And, and uh, then if you qualify, you'll get to participate. So it, uh, this was an example where the program started at the state level, but all of the heavy lifting was really having to be done by the local, uh, local parties. We were required to have a management plan in order to become a recognized heritage area, and then from there we had to do more work in order to become a certified heritage area. So the, the state had prescribed certain steps that needed to be taken in order for us to come together. And I think being able to go through the many years that it took to get from um, our idea to our certification really coalesced everyone around a, a common goal of making sure that we preserve not only our buildings but our natural areas and all of the things that make Anne Arundel County and our heritage area so wonderful. The whole concept of heritage areas um, really kind of was new to Maryland. Pennsylvania and Virginia were doing a, a successful job with attracting heritage tourists and telling a unified story and getting people to different sites. And so the legislation was really created by the state to encourage that in Maryland. And so from an economic standpoint and from a heritage tourism standpoint, we wanted to be a player, you know, with the big guys. But that, that first kind of meeting was instigated by Ann Flagston and Peggy Wall, and I want to give them credit for kind of getting it going, too. It was Ann Flagston and Donna Ware and Peggy Wall. Well, Peggy Wall was okay, but Ann and Donna were the historians, and I was the economic development person who in the past had been responsible for demolishing some of the things that they wanted to save. So they said, oh, you have to join us. And I said, no, I don't think so. And they kept saying, yes, you do, you do. And so I did, and I was very pleased to be the county executive's representative on the very beginnings of our heritage area. It was kind of interesting. We all kind of came up with um, sotweed sa sailors and seaports, or seaport sailors and sotweed, one of the, to bring it all together because there were so many seaports along the coastline of the heritage area itself. For lack of trying to single out any one theme and then, you know, kind of slight others, it became the Ultra or the Annapolis, London Town and South County Heritage Area. And that seemed to please everyone, it didn't offend anyone, so we, we stuck with Alcha for, for a good number of years. I'm a little disappointed that you changed your official name from the Annapolis, London Town, South County Heritage Area because Alcha is a great acronym. It almost sounds like you're sneezing. Alcha! God bless you. Alcha! I would say that the Four Rivers Heritage Area is among the most successful uh, that have that have been created, uh, perhaps in some regards the most successful. And I would point to a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, in some areas, uh, all of the real heavy lifting is done by the private nonprofit sector. In the uh, Four Rivers, uh, in the Four Rivers Heritage Area. You really have a lot of involvement by the county government, by the, by the municipal government. Uh, you have very active uh, participation from the private for-profit sector. And we hope that despite the bad economic times that are going on, that we can continue to, uh, uh, to put forward the kind of progress we've seen to date. I'm proud of the growth that we've seen, the funds that have come in, and uh, the mini grant program that we have is so wonderful for some of our fledgling groups. We've done some very scholarly books and maps. We've included uh, our African American heritage. I think it's been wonderful to uh, have so much diversity in the things that we've presented as a heritage area. It's 
you know, viewed upon as an economic engine for tourism. And it's been hugely popular. It's been uh, supported by all the legislators on throughout the state. So it's, um, it's one of those win-win programs. And so state funds have been, you know, we can say luckily, um, you know, supported throughout the entirety of this program. You've done a remarkable job supporting things like the Conference and Visitors Bureau expansion, the Annapolis Maritime Museum after Tropical Storm Isabel devastated the historic McNasby's Oyster Packing House, Four Rivers provided crucial support to get that rebuilt and today it's a beautiful centerpiece of the community. The Charles Carroll House, the Historic Annapolis Foundation, uh, renovations to the History Quest Center at the foot of Main Street and a number of renovations to uh, the Packer House. It has contributed to oodles of operating support as well. Everything from uh, oral history projects with the Banneker Douglas Museum and the Kunta Kinte Alex Haley Foundation to a uh, review of um, the Jewish community supporting the Knesset Israel Synagogue to uh, helping St. John's College preserve the last will and testament of one of its most famous alumni, Francis Scott Key. I mean, there are so many parts of our community that Four Rivers has played a part of. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to my legislators, to my stakeholders, to my board of directors, to my coordinating council, to my staff person, Alethea, to all of you that make heritage areas work in the state. Thank you so much for supporting us, and thanks for being part of our celebration.